Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. If somebody doesn't speak clearly, unfortunately, they get judged. Or you might have a lack of confidence just because of that. We're going to work on that with you. If you're that person, maybe you know somebody and she can definitely help you. She's with Speech Academy Edelon International, livestutterfree.com. Anna Dieter is back with us. Hi, Anna. How are you doing? I am great. Thank you for having me. How are you? Doing very well. And I know we've learned a lot uh, and I, it's enlightened me over the last few podcasts what stuttering actually is. I always thought, and I think a lot of us think that stuttering is somebody pausing, trying to d- d- decide what they're going to say next, but it goes a lot deeper than that when it comes to stuttering, right? It actually goes much Not deeper, but it's much easier when you look really at what normal speaking is. Because when you simply look at a person who is stuttering, at the moment he is stuttering, you can clearly see that he is not using correctly his speech instrument. Because speaking is instrumental instrumental action that we learn. It's a skill. And if a person haven't learned yet, hasn't learned yet to move his speech muscles in coordination for producing any word with ease, with accuracy, with confidence, then he just needs to learn. That's it. How much when somebody speaks and they want to speak clearly, how much of it is this and how much of it is this? Because I always thought that when somebody is stuttering, they can't find the words up here or the right way to project it down here. But you're saying it's more about the instrument. It starts with the instrument. So if you don't know, have never learned how to use your muscle and you attempt to do something with this muscle and you want to do it well, just like all other people, but you keep failing doing it. Guess what happens to you? you awaken your mind. You begin asking questions. What's wrong with me? Why I'm not speaking in the same way as other people? And young children usually do this. And they become afraid of doing it because they see a reaction of other people. People are laughing. Children are usually laughing because it is funny. When a child says the word not accurately, very often it sounds very funny. And people laugh and children laugh and even teachers laugh because it's a natural reaction. Yeah, sometimes and, it's it's cute. You know, little Johnny, he's yeah. only four and he's trying to talk and oh, how cute is that? But that's making an impression on him that, wait a minute, I, I they're, they're laughing at me and I'm trying to say something. Exactly. And that's when the mind comes into place. A person begins to believe the untruth, which is, I am special. I am different. I need a special way of uh, speaking for speaking. I need a special way for someone to treat me, to cure me. And a person stops speaking, period. And when you do not practice when you do not use your muscle you do not adjust your muscle to using in the same way how all people on the planet are using it your mind becomes confused and you begin believing lies i'm different i need some cure i need a therapy therapy is a medical term (laughs) Mm -hmm. okay and then of course two problems the person feels that both body and mind are not working properly it's very simple yeah and like you said you're judged you'll never forget that and it's almost counterproductive uh, i want to talk about your backstory who is calling you i don't know we're gonna find that out <laughs> let's go right to it here Welcome. Hi, who's this? Hi, this is Amber. Say it again. I want to make sure I heard you right. Amber? Yes, Amber. Hi, Amber. Checking in from Savannah, Georgia. And Anna 
is with okay. Amber and here. Did you have a question? Yes, I did. Um, you know, my, my new job makes me do um, public speaking, but I forget what to say when I get in front of the crowd. How can I stop this from happening? Very, very simple. <laughs> you got to be... <laughs> <laughs> you got to be focused not on people around you, not about thinking about something irrelevant. You got to understand what it means to speak. To speak means to first select what word you want to say, the word, not more than the word, and then be focused on feeling your tongue move, saying this word. That's it. And if at the moment when you are in front of the people, you do not pay attention to the organ, the muscle that you are using, you're supposed to use when you create words, then it's no mystery. You will lose connection with your speech and, and you will never be able to say a word. You will forget what you wanna say. This is exactly the block a lot of people have. When they get distracted from whatever they wanted to do. Are you understanding me, Amber? Or is she with us? I am understanding you, but you know, my, my issue is, you know, I mean, I know what I want to say, but it's just that when I get in front of the crowd, I don't know, something happens and uh, I, I can't remember what to say. <laughs> yeah. Because at the moment when you are in front of this, whoever it is, <laughs> right, your attention is where? And we have only one focused beam of attention. It's only one. We cannot do more than one conscious action at a time. So if you are in front of other people and you're looking at these people, you're studying them, it's a conscious action, your attention is on them, then you cannot physically, it's impossible to select the word that you wanted to say. So basically your mind now is busy not with the word, your attention is not focused on the memory of the word, but attention is on studying the people in front of you. So my recommendation, just take a little time to switch the focused beam of attention, which is like a beam of light, like from flashlight. Mm -hmm. Just take a moment of silence and go back to your memory, or I don't know where you get these words from, because we don't select words only from our memory. We select words with our eyes, with our ears, with our other sensors of the body, okay? So I don't know what is it that you want to talk about, but your mind should be on the word you want to say. And also, sometimes people attempt to say too much at one moment. When you say, I know what I want to say. Right. So what is it that you want to say? Is it one or hundred words? <laughs> if you want to say a hundred words, there is no way you will remember them all. No, it's impossible. <laughs> so, well, of course... I appreciate your insight and your advice, um, and um, I'm going to try to use it. All right, Amber, thank you very much for checking in. Thank you. Have a great day. You don't want to. But, but I also want to mention just uh, after this call sure. that if people have the problem of forgetting what they want to say, it's very, very simple. It indicates that they are not using correctly their beam of attention, focused beam of attention. They don't know how to use it, they don't realize that. Consciousness, we have only one beam of consciousness, one. We cannot multitask. We can't, it's impossible. It's in my book, Speech is a Skill. It's all explained that when we speak, we must use correctly our attention focus, okay? And of course, once again, if you attempt to say too much at once, it's impossible. We have only one tongue. 
one mouth, only one ringtone comes out at a time. We can't memorize to say every word in ringtones that we talked about last time, but you gotta memorize it. You gotta train your tongue to do all the ringtones for each and every word. And if Ember haven't had this experience, hasn't had this experience yet, she may have a problem. Okay. What about while we're talking about public speaking, Amber, and which is one of the top three fears, and it's been that way for decades that people have just speaking in front of an audience. How about some tips that we can share? The one that comes to my mind is a lot of times, similar to what you said, right away, you want to jump in and start talking and say, but it's okay to just pause for a second. Sometimes when you're you know, in front of everybody, that pause seems to feel like it's going to be 10 days long but it's not, it's in your mind. Just taking that moment to, hey, I got something to say and I'm gonna deliver it to you right now. Okay, so when you take a pause, it's a great suggestion, but people There's always need... a but. Anna always has a but. Every time I say something, there's a but. <laughs> always, always, because I understand, I see clearly what naturally normal, confident, comfortable speaking is. If you want to say a pause, you need to understand what's the reason. Yeah. Why? What do I need this pause for? And it's the very... reason. Let me let me jump in if I may interject right here, Anna. The reason is what you said to regroup. Because if you get flustered and you're looking at the audience, which you shouldn't be, you should be focusing in your brain of the word. That's a reset. That's the only reason I brought that up. Sometimes it's in the brain. But most of the time, it's not in the brain. <laughs> and that's, that's our, what mind, our mind is somewhere where we direct our attention. Okay. I'm going to direct, direct our attention to a, another call. Hi, who's this? Oh, oh. <laughs> Hello? Hey, my name's Mitch. How are you doing? Hey, Mitch. Checking in from Raleigh, North Carolina. You're with Anna. And wow. we're looking to help people speak more clearly. What's your question? Oh, man. I have so many questions. You know, I find that I actually, you want to hear something ironic. I struggle with my transitions a lot when I speak. Um, how are you transitioning kind of from thought to thought? I find myself kind of helicoptering when I when it's time to transition. Uh, now, when you say transition, yeah. Mitch, I just want to make sure that we, we know what you're referring to. What is that? Just like in, in communicating with people in general. Like when I'm a communicating idea, like a thought, uh, and I'm like trying to transition to maybe like my next point or my next kind of thought. Oftentimes I'm not sure I've communicated it well enough and I'll helicopter. Uh, and then, and then obviously I spend too much time and then I'm like, kind of get lost in the weeds. What's your thoughts, Anna? Okay. I have a lot of thoughts <laughs> to share. Mitch, I was listening to the way you were speaking and your speech was fine, but it wasn't that clear. And I will explain why. Your words were all blended together. It all sounded like one word. And this is exactly what we were talking about before. It's very important to understand that we need some time for selection the next word. You said the word, see, the way we talk naturally is silence, word, silence, next word, silence, next word. Why there is a silence? Because we truly need time to select the next word. We are not robots. <laughs> we need to select words. We have so many words that we know they are in our memory in our ear memory. We remember them, how they sound. But whenever we speak, we need time to select the next word and the next one and the next one. The more we speak, the shorter this pause, as uh, Stephen mentioned, pause is the moment of silence. It shortens. And I can tell that Mitch is talking a lot <laughs> and he doesn't have any silent moments anymore. Da, 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 da. It's not easy for you, Mitch, because it's confusing. You don't have time for your brain to process, 
to understand what you have said and what you haven't. This is the reason you become confused. And even the word transition, this word we can simply substitute with the word, the moment of silence for selecting the next word. In the real world, naturally, we speak only by the method of so-called addition. We are adding word, one word, plus another word, plus another word, plus, plus, plus. And we can talk like this without being tired for the rest of our life nonstop. But in order to switch our attention from word to word, we require what? Time. Not a lot. I'll just tell you because I am a scientist and I like numbers. So in reality, in order to transition, you need from a split of a second to up to three seconds. People will still wait for you if you have something important for them <laughs> to say. If they want to hear what you want to say. Mitch, are you still with us? I'm with you. Yeah. So does it make sense what I have said? Yeah, it does. I actually, I'm in sales full time, so that's going to help me a lot. Uh, I sell for a ticketing company and we do event ticketing all over the country. So I'm talking to people a lot. And the yeah, see, I'm, I'm, talking, I'm talking with people a lot. Blah, 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 blah. See, you got to understand when you speak, you move one muscle of your body. It is your tongue. Yes. Our tongue is like a flag flapping in the wind. That's exactly right. But you using your tongue fine. However, you don't allow a little time for selecting. What's the next word? What's the next one? So my straight recommendation for you, just literally practice this. Silence, word. Silence, word. And what do you need silence for? To select the next word. <laughs> if you can select it quickly, then go ahead and move your tongue. But never ever even attempt to move your tongue if you don't know yet what to say. You know what I've often found? If you slow, I call it tapping the brakes when you're speaking and you just slow it down a little bit. In your mind, it's you're thinking, oh my gosh, I am talking really slow right now, but you're really not. It's all in your mind. So Mitch, thank you very much for checking in. Thank you, Mitch. Yeah, hey, if you need online ticketing or registration, Steve, you just let me know. I'm with Ticket Spice. We'd love to help you out. <laughs> I appreciate it. He's selling us right now. I think he was just actually trying I to sell am. us something. I was actually, you were on my cold call list, and then I ended up on your radio show, and I thought I might as well take advantage of it. <laughs> Fantastic. What's the name of your company again? Ticket Spice. So we do online event registration and ticketing all around the country. We're saving people up to 27% in revenue and making people a lot of money from some proprietary technology. We'd love to help you out. So I want to say something here, and this is, it's weird how the universe works. I've worked with your company before. <laughs> no way. How was it? Was it awesome? It was. I mean, that, all right, we're going to move on here, but this is so weird that he's calling in and <laughs> getting advice, so to speak. The universe, the universe works in its own way. A hundred percent. All right, Mitch, thanks a lot. Well, we'd love to work with you again, man. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Well, that was... <laughs> <laughs> you never know what you're going to get when you answer the phone. All right. Back to the topic at hand, and that is helping people speak clearly. I don't think I've ever asked you this, Anna, but... I'm sorry? I mean, I hear the phone calling again. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me put that down there. Okay. I, I don't think I've ever asked you this, but how did this begin for you? What was your, what was your inspiration to want to teach people how to speak clearly? You know, it all started when I was uh, 17 and graduated from school. I wasn't a good student. I mean, I was okay with literature, with Russian language, but math wasn't my friend, really. Math, chemistry, physics, nah, I didn't really like it much. I wasn't interested. Same here. And, okay, and that's what happened 
just happened that my both parents were professors, PhD professors in the University of Education in Russia. My father was a dean of the faculty of physics. His responsibility was to help me with math and physics. Mm. <laughs> okay. So, and my mother was the author of the textbooks of Russian language for the whole Soviet Union, for the whole country. Children were learning Russian language by my mother's textbooks. You can imagine the level of my parents, okay? So, and when I graduated, they just told me, you know what, Anna, just go where your mother works. <laughs> She was working at the University of Education as well and teaching Russian language there. So I joined the same Department of Speech and Language Therapy, Pathology and Special Education. And that was it. Wow. It was very, very simple. <laughs> How much of a challenge was it for you coming from Russia, then coming to the States, learning English, and trying to speak fluently. It was challenging, but I never take no for answer. This is my thing. If they tell me no in one door, I'm gonna go out and get in through the window or something like that. Because if I have one thing in mind, I'm gonna go for it till I can breathe. Because I realize every human being is a beam of light. We all are just containers of light, okay? So, and we are giving light to other people. This is our mission on this planet. It should be our mission on this planet. We just are not aware of that. We don't understand that. And this is why people have what they have, <laughs> all kinds of troubles. So it was challenging, but, you know, I learned. I just went one step at a time, learned English, learned to operate a computer, learned to drive a car. I was about 40, close to 40 when I moved. Wow. And uh, I did what I wanted to do first. I proved my master's degree, my diploma. I got employed with Los Angeles Unified School District in California, helped children with their speech there and wasn't happy there because mm. I didn't like the system of education in this country. Sorry to say that. <laughs> You're not the only one to say that. So don't worry. Okay. <laughs> There's no judgment. And then I moved to a smaller district in California and I hated it even more because I was a fighter during the IEP meetings. I don't know if you're familiar with that. Mm. IEP meeting is for students special education students, individual educational plan. So all I had to do just sit on these meetings with lawyers, with teachers, with parents and waste my valuable time instead of working with students, teaching them. So I was not a happy camper and in 2010, when California school districts didn't have any money for teachers, especially the ones who were with my level. I was at a very high level of the salary table, <laughs> okay? Mm -hmm. And they kicked me out of the school district. I was unemployed, okay? So after that, after this unemployment, I started looking at what to do. I didn't want to go back to a school district, any school district. I just couldn't take it anymore. Everything was against my desire to give people my light, to explain to them that they can be lights as well. That stuttering, I mean, back then I didn't know anything about stuttering, but that speech is a skill. I always knew that. Well, and so that's, how I met, that's how I met my mentor online. Wow. Doing search, yeah, research. Unbelievable. And and here you are, livesutterfree.com, helping people online. We have about a, a minute left. If somebody wants to change their life, or maybe they know somebody, maybe it's a family member, maybe a spouse that's having issues speaking or wants to have more self-confidence and speak clearer, they just reach out to you. And how does it begin, Anna? 
Yes, let me tell you, all you need to do is just land on the website, livestarterfree.com, register for the webinar. Of course, you can go through the website because the whole website is my classroom. I educate even with every page on my website. But I encourage everyone to register for the webinar about the four precise steps any person should take to reach his perfect speech destination in almost no time. So watch the webinar, then the system will take you to my calendar and you can book a Zoom call with me directly. Everything is free up until moment. I mean, the moment free consultation, you just talk to me, you communicate with me, let me see you. Let me see what you are doing how you are abusing your perfect body and mind by your computer. We wanted to talk about it, but we didn't. Mm. <laughs> well, you know what? It, it was great having you here and, and tons of awesome information. Livestutterfree.com. This is the point where I take a long, dramatic pause and say, thank you very much for being here. You know what? I truly enjoyed your speaking today. You haven't repeated even one word, Stephen. Good student. <laughs> The teacher just gave me an A. I think I just got an A. I'll take that. A plus. A plus. Woo, look at that. Anna, thank you so much. Have a great weekend, and we'll talk next time. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on mytuner-radio.com or search Podcast Business News Network on streama.com and onlineradiobox.com slash US. Take your podcast on the go and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's, it's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit HFOTUSA.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's going to be okay.